Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Steve Freeman Podcast. It is Tuesday, right? It is Tuesday, right? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Six o'clock, almost on the dot. Thank you guys so much for being with us tonight. Tonight, we are doing something a little different, a little new. And as with all things new, you kind of have to ease into it just a little bit. We are simulcasting tonight on Twitch, on YouTube, and on Facebook. So there's absolutely no reason on God's green earth why you're not tuned in to the podcast tonight. We are in your face everywhere you live. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. You guys will have to let me know where exactly you are listening, watching from tonight. That'll be good. There's been a little bit of technical difficulties going on. And usually there's one source so that whenever you guys type questions or comments or anything like that, it, it no matter what platform you're you're watching or listening, it, all, it shows up right there on one, so I don't have to have 67 screens open. Well, tonight, I've got 67 freaking screens open because of technical difficulties. So I've got Facebook open. It's a good thing I've got this. I, I, I love this 38-inch ultra-sharp, ultra-wide monitor that I have because it allows me to be able to have all these different screens open. And then I've got my main screen here, and then I've got a big one up there and one over there and one back there. So if you leave a comment or you've got a question, by God, I'm going to find it one way or the other. And I will continue to see if the main one that brings them all together, if we can somehow get it to work, because that would be nice, because it's right there in front of me. I can see, oh, Scott Butler joins. Scott's on Facebook. JB Cannon's on Facebook. Thank you, guys. That's different for you, Jay. You're normally the YouTube guy. And then one time you watched on Twitch, so... You guys are kind of adulterous when it comes to your social media platforms. I just got to be real honest with you. So I got several things that I want to talk a little bit about uh, tonight. And then, of course, anything that you guys want to talk about, I am up for it as well. I do want to talk about it is CMA week here in Nashville, so I do want to talk a little bit about the CMA Awards. Um, Every CMA week, it's also like ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC awards. All of the PRO awards. Um, my wife and I were invited to go to um, the Titans game on a Sunday uh, playing the Patriots. So I was like, you know what? I've never seen Tom Brady play in person. You know, so and it's all it's one of those things where you know that you know the guy regardless of what he says. The guy's going to have to retire like any minute now. I mean, it's just going to reach that point. And so it was like, you know, normally I love, because, you know, I've got the NFL Sunday ticket. I love sitting, you know, in my favorite comfortable chair in the living room with every comfort known to man. And I like watching the games that way, you know, know, getting all my lineups set together. But when we got invited uh, by our good friends, uh, Byron and Ashley to to go to the, the game and they're like, oh, by the way, the tickets are on the lower bowl, like 45 yard line. I was like, absolutely, we got to go because y- y'all know how much I love people, right? So how much I love being around a lot of people, but it made the decision very easy uh, to want to go. And like I said, I wanted to see, you know, it's one of those things, one of those years from now, I'll be sitting around talking to my grandkids. I, had time, I, I saw Tom Brady. Uh, It was interesting, and what a game it turned out to be. It was a phenomenal experience to to go to the game. I've been to several Titans games before, but this was a different atmosphere. This was a different feeling. Number one, I don't think any Titans fan that walked into that stadium thought whatsoever that the Titans had a shot at beating the Patriots. What ended up happening was absolutely, teetotally amazing. It really was. Uh, the Titans end up winning big time. And the the stadium was electric. It it was just, it was a a lot of fun. Um, I had a blast. Stacy had a blast. 
and I know Byron and Ashley had a blast. We just had a blast together. It was a lot of fun. Um, but I was supposed to go to the CSAC Awards Sunday night. And I wanted to go. I was, it had nothing to do with not wanting to go or not wanting to be around people or anything like that. I really did want to go because I, I was telling somebody last week, after being with BMI for 15 years, I can count on three fingers the number of times I was invited to the BMI Awards. And I've been with CSAC now just a little over a year and was invited to come. And I feel bad for not going. I wanted to go and support everybody and, and, and have a good time. But after the game, I was just tired. I, I just wanted to come home and, you know, watch the Cowboys and the Eagles game. Look, it's bad scheduling on the NFL's part. I'm just going to say it. It's bad scheduling on the NFL's part or CSAC's part. You cannot have the CSAC awards the, the, when the Cowboys are playing the Eagles on Sunday night football. You just can't. So it was a great day for me. We went to the Titans game. It was a blast. The Titans blew the Patriots out of the freaking water, keeping their hopes alive uh, for the AFC playoffs. And then the Cowboys actually beat the Eagles. So it was a pretty good Sunday, <clears throat> excuse me, around my house. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, one of the things that, I, and don't forget, I've, I've got something that I need to talk to you guys about before we wrap up tonight. And somebody hold me accountable, and if I forget and start to go on, somebody remind me that, oh yeah, you were supposed to tell us about something. So just somebody hold me responsible for that. Uh, I've got some exciting news. I don't know if I can say everything, but I'm going to give, well, I mean, it's my damn thing, so I can say whatever the hell I want, in all honesty. Um... But I, I don't know if I want to go in great detail, um, but there is something exciting that I want to talk to you guys about, and it's kind of a call to a lot of creatives, um, and I will talk about that at some point. Somebody hold me accountable. Somebody in the chat. What's up, Chandler Jones, man? Happy birthday, by the way. Hope you had a great week, uh, weekend. I know you guys came up to Nashville. I'm sorry I couldn't spend any time with you. Uh, it was nuts, man, from, from Friday... On we went to my my daughter's uh, uh, high their their high school their well their school their high school I've got one kid in high school one in middle school the high school football team is in the playoffs and this was like the second round so we went to the football game Friday night and then we had volleyball pretty much all day Saturday for my youngest and it was just and then we like I said went to the Titans game it was just a long weekend but I'm sorry I didn't get to spend any time with you guys while you were here. Uh, but happy birthday, uh, nonetheless. Ring Roundup is here, man. Good to see you. Uh, my buddy Kevin Brown, all the way from, L no, well, what should I, is it, I guess, North Little Rock, Arkansas, Oak Grove area, where I grew up. Good to see you guys in here. Uh, J.B. Kennett says he's trying it all. <clears throat> that, that philosophy only works in a few things. So, like I said, y'all messing around on your other social media platforms over there. Um, but anyway, I will, I will get into all of that and what I want to talk to you guys about before uh, we get off. Um, this thing's not working, so I'm not going to be able to see everything on one screen. So, but I've got plenty of screens open over here. I've got YouTube open, I've got Twitch open, and I've got Facebook open. So if you type something in, I will be able to see your question or comment. So, so question or comment um, away. One of the things I was looking, I was scrolling through Facebook, which I, I actually, I'm not on Facebook that much anymore. Um, if you guys really want to know what's going on with me, you got to follow me on Instagram. Uh, that's the place. It's at the Steve Freeman everywhere, Twitter, Facebook, and I get to, I hate Twitter. I'm getting to the point where I hate Facebook. You just, you can't get on there when, and say, you could say the weather's beautiful today. And somebody's going to comment, I hate Trump. Or, man, this weather, it's turned cold. It's, it's kind of miserable. Yeah, thanks, thanks Trump for that one. I, it's, it's just getting ridiculous. You can't even have a civilized conversation anymore. Or, God forbid, post something that could be remotely taking as taken as political. And you're just going to get crucified for it. So, 
and I found that it's that way more so Facebook and Twitter than it is on Instagram. I don't, I don't see hardly any political stuff on Instagram at all. Maybe that's why I've kind of taken to that platform and I, and I love it so much because it's like, I just, you know, if it doesn't affect me and maybe that's a narrow worldview, but if it doesn't affect me, I really don't give a shit one way or the other about it. I'm just being real honest with you. If it affects me or my family, I'm all over it. If, if it's your issue, I don't care. I am 110% about me. I do care about other people. I care about other things. But when it comes to the political stuff, it's like, my God Almighty, get off your high horse. It's just enough already. But I was scrolling through today on Facebook, because like I said, I don't get on there very often. Um, and I was looking and I saw something about the new show, I think it's called Real Country or something like that on the USA Network. The judges are Travis Tritt, Shania Twain, and Jake Owen. And I thought, you know, I'd seen something about this a while back. I've not watched it, but I immediately went to YouTube because I'm like, okay, I want to see what this, what they're calling, you know, Real Country, number one. And I want to see kind of like what the interactions like, what the people are that are on the show. And, and when I got to YouTube and I started finding the, the clips from the show, I realized that what I had thought in the back of my mind all along was actually 110% true. Number one, this doesn't have anything to do really with real country. And as I started watching this, I have to tell you guys, I had about a two and a half hour window today where I went down a literal country music rabbit hole um, and it was actually I think I kind of needed it because I mean for my entire career I've been I've taken pride in, in being kind of this you know outsider figure I, I've been extremely fortunate and and I've been extremely successful but I, I never wanted to be on that inside I liked being on the outside and not being beholden to one person or the other so but today I, I, I was watching these clips and number one you, very rarely and probably never are you ever going to hear me say a negative word about Travis Tritt number one I think he's probably one of the greatest of all time now you, you know if you're 57 to 65, you're going to disagree with me. It's generational. But for me, half of the reason that I'm sitting in this chair in Nashville, Tennessee, and having built a life based on music and writing songs and producing records is because of Travis Tritt. There's guys watching right now on Facebook, Kevin and Scott, they will tell you, I was a Travis Tritt, Travis Tritt junkie. I just, the, the, he's an excellent songwriter, amazing singer, and an all-around great entertainer. Puts on a great live show. It, it just it was the whole package. You know, I'm fans of these guys that back when you actually used to have to have the full package, right? You had to be able to write songs. You had to be able to sing them really, really, really good. And you had to be able to put on a great live show. Today, you don't even really have to have any of the three of those things. Maybe you have to look good. You have to look good, and you have to be able to be relatable to a freaking 10-year-old. If you can do that, then you got a shot in this business. So long story short, coming back around, I, I, I start watching some of the clips. And number one, I'm not going to say that what I saw I thought was bad. But there for a second, I thought that I was not watching a singing competition, and I was watching some sort of a, like, late re-airing of a Halloween costume contest. And I guess one of the things that I want to get through to you guys, and I've, and I've talked about this before, but th this is important for you guys coming up. Because I bet I get this question, I bet I get asked it 10 times a week, if not more. That may actually be being a little conservative but I bet I get an email or a direct message or a phone call pigeon raven some sort of communication 
10 times a week, people, artists, young artists wanting to know, I've got an opportunity to go try out for The Voice. Should I do it? Oh, I, I've, got, I can, I, I've got a private audition for America's Got Talent. Should I do it? And my answer is always no. And then I like listening to that 45 seconds of silence afterwards because they can't figure out why in the world I would say no. I, I want to, let me give you and lay out my why not so that everybody can hear it, okay? Number one, these shows are built around and predicated on selling advertising, period. The, none of these shows are in the business of finding the next superstar, which I love. That's, their, that's every single one of them's tagline because they are preying on artists and creative people's desire to be famous. Not successful, famous, because everybody wants to be on TV, right? Everybody's going to come out to be on TV. We're searching for America's next superstar. That's how they get you out there. And that's how they prey on your dreams and, and everything else. But you have to understand that these shows, they, they, every show on television, believe it or not, is not on television because somebody thought it was a great show. That show is on television because they think they can make money with it. The only thing they care about whether it's good or not is if it brings viewers and holds viewers in. <clears throat> Excuse me. The more viewers that watch and they watch for longer, the more advertising dollars they can sell. So here I am watching this show. And I'm going to say something, and a lot of you aren't going to like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Personally, I have nothing against any of these people, the performers or the judges. Now, reference point one, I'll never say a negative word about Travis Tripp, ever. Never. Jake Owen, to me, I have nothing against Jake Owen. But has he even had exactly the kind of career that you're going to sit up there and judge somebody else? I mean, the guy's not exactly a superstar himself. Yeah, he's had a few hits. But he's not a superstar. Shania Twain, I, I'm sitting there looking at this thing, and I remember 1995, 1996, 1997 when Shania Twain was the biggest thing on the planet and I'm sitting there looking and I thought she was like dressed up as you know Reba McIntyre circa 1983 I, I I couldn't figure out what was going on with the clothes what was going on with the hair maybe I'm just being judgmental I'm just saying and she hasn't been relevant for 15 years so and then you've got Travis Tritt which I'm not going to say a negative word about I don't, I don't care if the guy was sitting up there in drag. I am all for Travis Tritt 100% of the time. But that's, that's the judges. That's neither here nor there. See, even when they picked, I was real surprised to find out that Travis was even going to be a judge on this thing because I didn't think that he quite fit the, the television mold. And, and so I'm glad that maybe I think, here's what I'm going with. I don't know this, but I'm going with it. They had to put Travis Tritt as a judge on the panel to add any sort of validity whatsoever to it being country. Can I get an amen? That's what I think. That is why Travis Tritt is a judge on this show, so that they can legitimately put the word country in it. Because there ain't nothing about Shania Twain country, and there's not much about Jake Owen that's country. And that's fine. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying. You're with me. So then I start watching the acts, and then it's like this one girl comes out, and it's like this poor girl has been making the rounds around Nashville forever, and it's like usual suspects. Oh, here they are. If you, you, know, you'll, you can catch them at Belcourt Taps next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and then they're also going to be on this new reality show. It's just more of the same. And then that, that, the band that was on there, I thought, oh, everybody's checking to make sure their wallet's still in their back pocket. It's not that they weren't good. 
But it was just like, what is this? I mean, somebody, I, I looked at this band and I was like, okay, somebody watched a Chris Stapleton video and said, hey, there's three of us. Why don't we all dress and look like we haven't bathed in six months and get up here and play Southern rock songs? The song wasn't great that I watched. The performance wasn't even that great that I watched. And then there was a duet on there that I there again thought that was a, a, a re-airing of a Halloween costume. She looked like Crystal Gale in 73. The big puffy shoulder dress on. And, and then I started thinking, okay, has somebody told you to dress that way or sing that way or be that way? Because whoever that person is needs to be just beaten with a wet noodle or something. But, and then I did something that I've never done before. I was like, okay, take the music out of it for a second, mute it, and see, see if what you're seeing on screen if you can identify with it at all, if you can engage with it whatsoever. So I reached up and I clicked the mute button and I'm watching these performances with the sound off. And the first thought that came to my mind was, these fools are making fun of, of country music. Now, I'm not saying that they are, but that's how I took it. By the, the 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 clothes that they're wearing and how they're acting and and so then I started to get mad because then I'm thinking, is this what they think country music is? And at that moment, I'm even going throw me throw a bro country act in here for goodness sakes because that's relevant at least. And I'm not saying that any of these people that are on the show are not talented. I, I'm sure they're talented on some level. But when I started watching it with the sound off, I really started to get frustrated and I got upset because it looks like a Saturday Night Live skit with the sound off. That seriously, that's the way that I, I don't know if any of you guys have watched the show, but if you haven't, try watching it and actually muting it because when you do, it seriously looks like they're just making fun of something and it looks like a Saturday Night Live skit about country music artists. And I don't think that does very much to forward country music. And I don't think it does very much to bring people in. So this is where I started to go down a rabbit hole. Macy says, I love Travis Tritt. I'm gonna try to get to some of y'all's comments as well. Um, Oh, so it premieres tonight. So, okay, what I was watching was, oh, okay, was, was promo stuff. Okay, great. I will not be watching it tonight. I'll tell you that. I got my fill this afternoon. It's Bush's fault. Uh, yeah, we broke a lot of guitar strings playing, playing Travis Tritt back in the day. But here's where I started going down the rabbit hole. And this is what I love YouTube for. I'm sitting there watching these, and you know, you've got over there on the right-hand side, you've got their suggested videos. And the top video on the suggested video was a video of a live performance of Travis Tritt doing any more. Well, that's all I needed to know. So I click on it. And I watched that thing from the very beginning because I remember, I remember being 14 years old, 12 years old, 13 years old. I can't remember exactly how old I was at the time. I was 12 or 13, I think. I remember, maybe I was a little older, but I remember back then dreaming of being where I am right now. And I remember in that moment I remember having a Takamini Santa Fe guitar in my hand. I remember listening to a record over and over and over and over again. 
And I remember the moment that I realized that I couldn't get my guitar to sound like Travis Tritt's, and I didn't understand why, because I wasn't taking lessons, none of that. I was totally self-taught. And then I remember seeing, some, seeing him on TV play this song a long time ago. And he had that, I didn't, at the time, I didn't know what a capo was. That's where I learned what a capo was, because Travis Tritt, on the record, played any more with the capo, capoed up three frets in the G position. So I'm sitting there today, reliving my childhood, watching Travis Tritt sing anymore. And then I really kind of get emotional because I'm sitting there watching this man perform this song live on stage and it just, it moves me. I've heard that that song anymore probably 600,000 times in my life, at least. But today it, 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 moved me in a way that it hasn't before because it, I started getting this sense of, wow, we have really lost it. Not just from a talent standpoint or a professionalism standpoint or an appearance standpoint. I'm talking about from a raw ability of going from watching this show where you've got a, the, a professional band behind you, you've got a national television audience, You've got all of this, and it can't translate. It will not translate for anything other than pure, unadulterated entertainment value. And I'm sitting here watching Travis Tritt, which this, the, the video that I was watching, I, it was, I don't know, it was maybe eight, nine, ten years old. It was, a, it was a video taken from one of his concert DVDs. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, with all of this production value national TV audience, shot in 4K, supposed to be the best thing we've got out there, and it, it, it can't touch me. It can't move me. And then I watched Travis Tritt set by himself on a bar stool in an auditorium singing a song by himself, and it's like I get hit like a tornado. And that's when I, 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 it really, you know, I've had an issue with what's going on in our business for a long time, but it really came to a head and it really hit me today just exactly how far we've come. See, we don't have artists that can do that anymore. Maybe Chris Stapleton. We get one, we get one every now and then. But here was the cool thing. As I'm watching this Travis Tritt video, there are more videos populating on the side of, of recommended videos of what to watch based on me watching this Travis Tritt anymore performance. And it was a Grand Ole Opry video. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna click it just because I'm interested, it's the, you know, it's the top one. If I like this one, I'm gonna like that one. So I click on it. And guys, I got lost in this thing for about an hour. And all it was, was footage from the Grand Ole Opry one night, and they brought out these stools, and Travis Tritt came out with an acoustic guitar. Sitting next to him was Waylon Jennings, just a guitar and a bar stool. Next to him was Joe Diffie with an acoustic guitar and a bar stool, and Steve Warner. Four guys, four acoustic guitars, four very different voices, and four bar stools, one stage. And I sit there and I listened to these guys perform and watching them and remembering growing up with all of these songs. And then it really hit me like a ton of bricks they had that audience and me totally and completely captivated, hanging on every chord they played and every note they sang. Now, here's the thing. Now, Waylon Jennings was not the world's greatest singer, right? But he was one of the world's greatest storytellers. So he had that persona. He had that presence 
that just sucked you in and brought you in and you hung on every word that the man said. Travis Tritt sitting next to him, phenomenal talent, again. Joe Diffie, ships that don't come in. Steve Warner sitting next to him, singing Kansas City Lights. These guys had the ability with nothing more than a microphone and an acoustic guitar and a bar stool to captivate people. We used to have artists that had that ability and we don't anymore. So when I talk to new artists and I talk to new songwriters, and again, we go back to that thing where I just keep finding repetitiveness over and over and over about being famous, being famous, Forget success, but I think somewhere along the line, the person that removed the element of being able to captivate people with your art and be talented in a way, that ought to play a part in what we're putting out into the world to represent any form of music. It doesn't just have to be country music. It can be any kind of music. But we've lost that. And I was thinking about my kids. I was thinking about my daughters. They will not know what it's like to be floored by an acoustic performance, by an entertainer. Because see, we don't have entertainers anymore. We don't. We have artists. And that's stretching the definition of the word for a lot of them. But we've got so many that are just fly by night. It, it is all about what you're releasing right now. That's why they release a new single every four weeks. Because nobody, it, it's, it's just, it's top of mind. It's, it's over your head. It's on to the next thing because we are in this what's next generation. So nobody puts a lot of work or effort or talent into what they're doing right now. And this all just really hit me today. Um, and I find it very interesting at where and just how far we've really come. Um, then the next video after that video was a video of performances of George Jones' funeral. Now, look, I'm not going to compare George Jones to Jake Owen or, or anything like that. But I did watch most of the performances, and I walked away realizing that we throw this question around all the time about, is country music dead? And I have to say that today I think I can definitively answer that question, and I think the answer to that question is yes, unequivocally. It's dead, and I'll tell you why I think that. After watching and going back and seeing the performances of George Jones' funeral memorial at the Grand Ole Opry, name me one artist that has a top 10, top 20, top 30, top 40 record on country radio right now that we will have a nationally televised funeral from the Ryman for. None. None. If it ever happens again, it will be from somebody from another generation. It will be a George Strait. You know, it will be, so, it, it'll be somebody like that. I'm talking new artists. They're not going to be throwing and, and having nationally televised funerals for the Michael Rays and Cole Swindells and Florida Georgia Lines and Zach Brown bands. And it, it, it ain't going to happen. Now, I'm not saying that those guys aren't talented. They don't make good music in some cases. But we don't have entertainers the way that we used to have entertainers. We don't have performers that have the ability to engage us in a way that makes us feel like turning on the radio is a worthwhile investment. And that's why music is so cheaply made. It's why music is so cheaply bought. But guys, I wanted to share that with you today because it, it um, 
I think it kind of turned a new leaf for me in watching it because it, it, I sit there and I watch Steve Warner, I watch Joe Diffie, I watch Waylon Jennings, and I watch Travis Tritt. And then fast forward over and you look at what's going on today and people are there and they're cheering for face value. Not because of what is happening on the stage is so great and they're so moved. People are just there because it's a TV show. And it, it just made me think how far we really have come. And I'm not so sure anymore that what we're dealing with right now, like I've always thought, was a revolution or an evolution in country music, so much so now that I actually, I, I, I think it's just over. I really do. I, I don't think it will ever go back. Uh, and maybe it shouldn't. And maybe that's what makes the older of us so fortunate. You know, we have, they said our parents were a golden age for this, for growth and opportunity and business and technology. And then our generation may be the last great generation that got to experience art in its most creative and fundamental form. When we did, when we had artists and entertainers who were capable of, more than capable of, providing the three core elements. Great songwriters, great singers, and great entertainers. Because we don't see them that, that often anymore. Very, very, very few and far between. The ones that are, most of the time don't have a large enough platform to actually spread how good they are around the rest of the world. And that's a sad thing. And that's where it's put on you and me to go research those things and find those artists. You know, Chris Stapleton was Chris Stapleton before Tennessee Whiskey, but nobody knew him. He didn't just find his voice one day. That guy's been around town for years. They are out there. And I encourage you guys to support independent artists. Find and research. Do whatever you've got to do. Don't allow great artists. Don't allow that to completely go away because it's on our shoulders. If we don't shine a light on it, nobody's going to shine a light on it. And I feel at some point we, we have a responsibility of people who appreciate Entertainers, we appreciate content and we appreciate talent and creativity. And most of all, we appreciate storytelling. All of us love stories. All of us love to be entertained. All of us love to be moved in one way or the other. So it's going to take all of us to do that. But it was interesting. I will not be watching the show tonight. I saw enough of the highlights that I just. I can't do it. And it's just a, it's just another it's just a, a, another fucking competition show to where whoever's going to win, you're never going to hear from them ever again. They'll be bouncing around Nashville and then they'll go back to where their hometown where they came from and they'll have a little bit of press around their hometown and then it'll die off and then you'll literally never hear from them again. Such is the story of everybody except for maybe 10 people you can name since American Idol started among American Idol, The Voice, America's Got Talent, all of them. There may be 10, maybe 20 in the last 15 years that you can actually name. So they'll, this show, everything else, it's just about selling advertising. It's about taking up airtime. So you can check it out if you want. More fake music up this weekend. <laughs> Speaking of uh, fake music and horrible music, uh, CMAs are this week. I, again, am taking no part in it whatsoever. Um, good luck to everybody who is. Um, if you haven't looked or you don't know, I'm going to run through these real quick. Entertainer of the Year, you've got Jason Aldean, Luke Bryan, Kenny Chesney, Chris Stapleton, and Keith Urban up for it. I uh, would love to see Stapleton or, or even Keith Urban win it. Love me some Keith. He's a great guy. Um, single of the Year, Broken Halos, Chris Stapleton, Drinking Problem from Midland, 
uh, drowns the whiskey, Jason Aldean and Miranda Lambert, which I actually have to say, I, I, against my better judgment, turned on the radio the other day by complete accident. And that song was on. I listened to it and actually kind of liked it a little bit. Uh, Meant to be by B.B. Rexa and Florida Georgia Line, which, I mean, why? how in the world can you literally be considered for single of the year when there are literally eight fucking lyrics in that entire song? And it's right there in the title, Meant to Be. Uh, and then Tequila, Dan and Shay, which I think is a great song. Love Tequila by Dan and Shay. Um, female vocalist of the year, Kelsey Ballerini, Miranda Lambert, Maren Morris, Casey Musgraves, Carrie Underwood, not a single country female vocalist in the bunch. Uh, male vocalist of the year, Dirks Bentley, Luke Combs, Thomas Rhett, Chris Stapleton, Keith Urban. Would love to see Luke Combs get an award for something. I don't care for anything. Love that guy's philosophy, and that guy is deserving of every single thing he's getting right now. Love that guy. Uh, vocal duo of the year, Brothers Osborne, Dan and Shay, Florida Georgia Line, Maddie and Tay, Ty, or Tay, Maddie and Tay, Sugarland. Why are Maddie and Tay even nominated? Did they even have a single out this year? I didn't think so. New Artist of the Year, Lauren Elena. She's only been around for about eight years. Luke Combs deserves it. Chris Jansen, been around forever. Uh, Midland, been around forever. Brett Young, been around for at least four years. The, those are your new artists of the year awards. You want to talk about how hard it is to break through in country music? Chris Jansen's up for new artist of the year. Okay, the guy's been around for 10 years. Unbelievable. Uh, vocal group of the year, Lady Annabelle and Blanco, Little Big Town, Midland, Old Dominion. Really don't give a shit about any of them. Uh, album of the year from... Uh, from a Room, Volume 2, Chris Stapleton, Golden Hour, Casey Musgraves, which I still think is odd that Casey Musgraves, her album, is up for Album of the Year and sold less than 100,000 copies. I just think that's strange. I think it's great. That's great, even though she's not on an independent label. It's great news for independent artists that sell, because most all of you, well, probably 98.999% of you sell less than 100,000 copies. That's nominated. Graffiti U, Keith Urban will always be nominated as long as he puts out an album, and deservedly so. Life Changes, uh, Thomas Rhett, great artist, great songwriter. Uh, and The Mountain by Dirk Bentley, which I don't think I've listened to a Dirk Bentley song in eight years, and I don't feel like I've missed anything. Uh, song of the Year, Body Like a Back Road. Don't even get me started. Broken Halos, Chris Stapleton. Drowns the Whiskey. Uh, Drunk Girl, Chris Jansen. What a wonderful song that was great performance as well uh and tequila dan shade that's going to be a that's going to be a tough one uh a real tough one there we all know what's going to win sam hunt's going to win um musical event of the year burning man dirk Bentley features uh, featuring brothers osborne dear hate mary morin featuring vince gill dad drowns the whiskey jason aldean miranda Lamp. that will probably win everything's going to be all right david lee murphy and kenny chesley would love to see that win just because i like david lee uh, and then I'm not even going to mention the last one because I just can't even stand them. Uh, music video of the year, Babe, Sugarland featuring uh, Taylor Swift, Cry Pretty, Carrie Underwood, Drunk Girl, Chris Jansen, Marry Me, Thomas Rhett, Tequila, Dan, and Shay. Now the number one category that actually means the most to me more than any of them, Musician of the Year, because I work with all these guys, Jerry Douglas, uh, Dobro, Paul Franklin, Steel Guitar, Dan Huff on guitar, Mac McAnally for guitar, and Derek Wells on guitar. I'm rooting this year for Derek. Would love to see him uh, pick up the win. So those are your uh, 2018 CMA Award nominees. Uh, Chris Stapleton leads the pack with the most. And let's just pray to God. You know, we can all send up a prayer and hope that he's the one that takes it home because I think he's the most deserving by far. Jerry Coretz is watching on Facebook. He says, hey, my old friend from Yuma, Yuma, Arizona, back in my radio days. Out in Yuma, Arizona. I'll never forget the night we moved out to Yuma, Arizona. My wife looked at me and said, where the F have you brought me to? And I looked right back and said, I have no clue <laughs> because I don't know where we are. I just know we got there at like two o'clock in the morning. It was 113 degrees, long time ago. Good to hear from you, Butch. Hope you're doing well, brother. Uh, Kevin says, what are your thoughts on Ward Davis and Cody Jinks? Um, 
You know, I have to say that I applaud anybody that does what they do and continue to do it the way that they do it, despite the lack of mainstream success. Um, I love what those guys are doing. Uh, it reminds me a lot of kind of like the old outlaw movement because you got to think back in the day, right? Chris Christopherson and Waylon Jennings and Willie, those, I mean, and Johnny Cash even, the mainstream country label system and, and country music business hated those guys. Absolutely hated them. That's why they called themselves the outlaws because they hated them. And that none of them would conform to what the labels wanted them to be. They were way too opinionated politically in every way else. And, and at the time, those political opinions did not tend to, were not mainstream as they are today. Um, so they didn't conform. Willie went back to Texas. And... Chris started going off and doing movies and Johnny Cash did whatever the hell Johnny Cash wanted to do whenever the hell Johnny Cash wanted to do it because he's Johnny Cash. Same thing with Waylon. So when I think about people like Cody Jinks and Ward Davis, I'll throw Ray Scott uh, in there. I, and Jason Charles Miller. Look, I've been, I was fortunate enough to work with Jason Charles Miller. I think Jason Charles Miller is is one of the most talented individuals that I've ever been around, and I've been around everybody, the biggest of the big. And he is one of the most talented individuals from a songwriting, singing, performance, entertainer. That guy's a complete package. I'll throw him in that. I, I love the underbelly, un, independent, off-the-radar artists. But going back to what I was saying earlier, it is, it's going to take me, you, and everybody else watching tonight, it's going to take all of us supporting those guys, buying their music, buying their merch, buying concert tickets. We have to support them for them to continue to do what it is that they do that we all love them for. So that's on us. We have to continue to show them support. Love those guys. Um... Let's see. I, I've now, see. This is the problem now because I, I've, I've got to go through all of the different screens. Uh, let me see here. Uh, love tra oh, yeah. Love Travis Tritt. Absolutely. Uh, Ring Roundup says, we got an independent local artist here. Check him out. His name is Kyle Daigle. Check him out on YouTube. Kyle Daigle. I'll check him out. See what I think about it. Um, if you have a question or a comment, no matter where you're watching, if you're watching on YouTube, drop it in the comment section. If you're watching on Facebook, you can drop it in the comment section there as well. Or you, if you're watching on Twitch, you can drop it in, uh, in the chat section right there and it will, it will pop up. Um, but yeah, I think, we, I think everybody, everybody talks about how much they love independent artists, and I keep wondering why if that many people really love what they do, why they struggle financially so bad. I'll tell you the people that I think have it figured out are the Texas people, right? Those guys have got it figured out. They, they hate Nashville for the most part. I was going to say something. I'm actually not going to say it. For the most part, they hate Nashville. Um, and Nashville hates them because Nashville cannot seem to figure out how they're being so successful doing everything the opposite way that Nashville says you're supposed to do it. But the guys down in Texas have it figured out. These Texas music artists, they've, the, the Jason Bolins of the world, and, and it's like I'm, 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 I'm kind of in that area right now because I'm working with a Texas artist right now, and, and uh, I will toot my own horn just a little bit. Um, her new single came out that I co-wrote with her and that I also produced on her. It was the highest charting debut record on the Texas charts this week. So I was really proud uh, of that and proud of her. She's going gangbusters down there. Her name's Morgan Ashley. Uh, the song's called Bad Boy Chaser. You can check it out. It's everywhere. Um, but I am really getting to a point where I respect what the uh, what the Texas artists have going on down there, uh, and that's starting to spread. That's seeing. I think that's what scares Nashville more than anything is that it's not just Texas anymore. 
right? This Texas music red dirt thing is now spreading into Colorado, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, North Dakota, South Dakota. It's starting to take over. And uh, it, it's kind of interesting what they're doing. They're having no problem selling records. You've got radio stations down there that are committing a certain percentage of their playlist to Texas artists and Red Dirt artists. Um, it used to be that you had to be from Texas. Now, though, as the format gets pushed out a little bit, you know, they're welcoming in artists from Oklahoma and welcoming artists from Arkansas and from Missouri. And, and as long as they're in that Texas frame of mind and, and they're in that Texas or Red Dirt, Red Dirt thing, then you're good to go. Um, and that's exciting because there is some really, really good stuff. Now, I will say it, that it's not, uh, it's not all my thing, okay? It's not all my cup of tea, uh, but I appreciate it. And, and I like what those guys are doing down there. And I love the fact that they give the middle finger to Nashville and they don't need Nashville whatsoever to sell records, get people to concerts or do any of that. So I love them for that. Absolutely love them for that. Um, and for any of you independent artists that are out there watching, pay attention. See what they're doing. If you want to follow somebody, stop trying to follow Kelsey Ballerini, for Christ's sakes. Go down there and look at what some of the Texas artists are doing because they are growing their fan bases like you wouldn't believe. And they're selling records, and they're selling concert tickets, and they're booking shows, and they're selling merch. And it's working out just fine for them. All right, I'm going to open it up just before. I, yes, I'm going to talk about the thing that I've got going on uh, just briefly. But I want to make sure that if you've got a question or a comment that we get to it before I end the show tonight. Um, because I don't want you to think that I was ignoring you by any stretch of the imagination. It, it is a little difficult not having this one thing where all of the comments come through and actually having all of these separate windows open. But we're making it and we're gonna do it. Uh, so if you've got a question or a comment, pop it in the chat on whatever platform you're watching and, uh, and I'll try to get to them. Uh, what do you guys think about the Facebook, YouTube, Twitch thing? This is the first time we've ever simulcast the podcast on Facebook tonight, very first time. Um, I don't know. I mean, I can see how many of you are watching on various platforms. Still seems like YouTube's the bigger platform. But maybe it's just because this is the first time we've ever done it and it's been on Facebook. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that's part of it. Um, but I think we're going to start doing this every week now. It is going to be on all three platforms, and this is going to kind of lead into what I was going to tell you, what I'm, what I'm working on, and what I may need you guys to help with. Um, I have been... Uh, taking meetings and, and on this thing that we're going to kind of blow up. Um, not only are we going to sim start simulcasting the show live Tuesdays, and we're probably going to add Thursday, according to this, this contract, I'm going to have to do two days a week. So we will probably do Tuesday and Thursday is what I'm thinking right now. And we will simulcast it live as we are doing right now. We will simulcast live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Then it will be available on demand the next morning on YouTube and Apple on iTunes as the audio version, the podcast, will be available on iTunes. There will be one other location that, I, and I guess Facebook, does Facebook store these things too? I See, I'm not on Facebook enough to know. I guess it will be on demand technically there too, but it's going to go one other place, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about. I am really excited about something that I'm working on with my good friend, Jacob Young. Uh, many of you know Jacob from The Bold and the Beautiful and lots of other movies. He's in every, I think he's in every Lifetime or Hallmark movie that comes out in the next, <laughs> next three weeks, next, leading up to Christmas. The guy's all over the place. Uh, and uh, we are partnering up with some other folks and we are launching and putting together a network that will have channels on Roku devices, uh, Google Chromecast, 
Amazon Fire Stick, and Apple TV. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a huge undertaking. Uh, it's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of content. We're talking about television shows, series, shows like mine. Jacob's show is going to be available on there. Um, but I want to, to give you guys the opportunity because there's nothing like grassroots, right? There's nothing like getting, well, there's nothing like getting other people to do the work for you, which is, which is awesome. But here's what I'm serious about. We live in an age right now of content consumerism. I bet you didn't think that when you logged on tonight, you were going to hear me say big words like content consumerism. But that's kind of the age that we're in. It's, it is all about content 110% of the time. I mean, let's face it, we are all... I have four phones right here. I've got, let's see, one, two, three, and I guess the other one's downstairs. So we are constantly inundating ourselves with content, right? So I want to jump in on that, and having this network of our own is the first step towards that, but we also have to fill the network full of programming, and I am insistent, since it's my network, that I do want it to be original. Um, I don't want to just go out and license other content from other places and pop it. I don't want to do that. I want when you watch something on one of our channels on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, any place like I want it to be something that we directly had our hands on and something that we picked and that's, a, that's special and original programming for us. So I know all of you watching, everybody's got friends, everybody's got neighbors, everybody's got family. Somebody around you is a content creator. There will come a time in the next week or so where I'm going to put out a post on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, everywhere, Tinder. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have Tinder. Uh, I'm going to put it out. We are going to be looking for extremely creative people that are interested in creating original content for this network. So for those of you guys that, that know people that... that this is kind of their thing. They love to create content, whether they do YouTube videos or they do a show of some sort, whatever it is, just creatives. Uh, we're going to start taking considerations for those things and looking for some people that we think that can really add value uh, to what the network is going to be. I'm not allowed to tell you what the name of it is. I will tell you that I got the logo back today. I was really happy with it. Um, and that I'm trying to aim to have the channel go live the week before Christmas. We're working on some content right now that we're going to put up, uh, but my goal is to have and launch the channels across all of the, plot, all, all of the platforms the week before Christmas. That's the goal. Um, so I will be reaching out and talking to some people um, about content as well. well. Oddly enough, I've tried the last couple of days to talk to some people. Everybody talks about how how all the people on YouTube just love each other? Bullshit. Bullshit. This whole hashtag small creator, no. Nobody returns emails. Nobody returns phone calls. It, it's, it's the damnedest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's like the country music business all over again. Uh, but I am looking forward to working with some very creative people and creating some content. And uh, it's going uh, to be a lot of fun and I'll have more details uh, for you guys coming up on exactly what you're going to be able to find on this network, on these channels. It's really going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a ton of work, but I'm really, really, really looking forward to it, and I will keep you guys informed on it uh, as we go along. And if you do know somebody that is an awesome content creator, just a very creative person in, in the video, film, TV space, uh, have them hit me up, social media, at the Steve Freeman everywhere, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can shoot me an email, thestevefreeman at gmail.com. Have them get in touch with me, and I will get, in, get back in contact with them and tell them uh, everything that's going on and hopefully, uh, you know, visit with them and see if there's some stuff that, uh, that we can find out there that would be great content for the network. Guys, I don't see any more questions coming through or comments coming through, so I think we will probably drop it for the night and for the rest of the week. 
Um, I hope that you guys go out, have an awesome rest of your week. I know here in Nashville, it's cold. Everybody bundle up. It's freaking cold, man. It, it's, I had to have like a, a house coat over everything I was wearing today. It was so cold. But uh, you guys stay warm. Uh, and uh, we will be back next Tuesday. Same time, same bat channel. Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, the Steve Freeman Broadcast. Uh, so that's what we're doing, and we're having fun at it. So what difference does it make, right? Anyway, guys, before we get out of here, let me just remind you, as always, keep being creative. Keep pressing the boundaries, and there's nothing wrong with being independent. Guys, see you next week. the dark